Here's what it looks like when your fantasy world has its own Wikipedia. And this video will explain how you can make your own. In fact, we'll be better than Wikipedia. The interactive map that we built in parts 1 to 4 is integrated into this wiki in a multitude of places, including a full-size map page where you can explore it in all its glory. And pick out places that you want to read more about, let's say, this city. This is what a typical city, town or village web page looks like. You have the map centered on the place you're looking at, but also fully interactive to explore your surroundings. You have a fact box with the most important demographics data. And then, of course, as much text as you want to include on your place. Like in Wikipedia, this is all hyperlinked to other places. So you or your players can wander around to discover the entire game world. If we go one level up to the realm that this city is a part of, we get a similar page with another fact box. Again, a map, this time one that highlights the realm. Textual descriptions about anything that is important. And the second part where we'll beat Wikipedia an automatically created list of provinces that make up the realm with some basic data. And if we click on a province, again we get a fact box, a map, highlighting our selection, and again two automatically created sections about points of interest and settlements in this province. So this is what we'll be building and I'll tell you exactly how you, too, can make something like this. Just like QGIS and Mapbox are the foundation of our map, here are the two building blocks of our fantasy world Wikipedia. MediaWiki and Semantic MediaWiki. MediaWiki is the software that powers Wikipedia. It is free software and you can download it on MediaWiki.org. Or if you don't have a server to host it on, you can find providers online that will run a MediaWiki instance for you for a couple bucks a month. Semantic MediaWiki is an extension to MediaWiki that makes the software smarter. It gives us the automatically generated parts and allows us to search in interesting ways. I'll explain it all in more details later. Getting these two running leaves us with a barebones wiki that does very little. The real magic in Dragoneye is in my extensive use of semantic templates. Let's have a look again at that city page. But instead of looking at it like a reader, Let's look at it like an editor. Here's how the fact box is built. The syntax is how MediaWiki uses templates. Two curly brackets and then the template name plus a bunch of variable assignments. Let's look at that template. That's a fairly complex one, but I'll walk you through its parts. First, we want that it all shows up as a table. That also leads to the syntax with the pipes and minus characters further down. That's how you tell MediaWiki where the columns and rows are. The first column is text we show. The second column is semantic MediaWiki magic. The double square brackets make this a link and the name plus double colon part is the semantic piece that lets the computer know what this number or word means. Let me explain that. If you write a text that describes your fantasy city, there could be all kinds of numbers and names in your text. We now have some AI systems that begin to actually understand such text. But since we have control of our text here, we can make things easy by explicitly telling the computer about meaning. That is where normal Wikipedia and our fantasy atlas differ. Look at these lines. Both of them contain numbers, but one of them is an elevation and one is a population. Here, that's obvious, but on a page that describes, say, a small town in the mountains, both of these numbers could be around 2000. The semantic part tells the computer what this number is. This can then be used in automated tables, like the cities that make up a province, and you can sort by population and so on. But it can also be used in other ways, most importantly in searches. For example, this list of cultures here is automatically generated by this simple query. 
Are you beginning to understand what power this gives you? Anything you want to know about your world, you can write as a query and get a page that gives you the answer. What are the five largest cities in the world? What are the five largest cities that are in a monarchy? Are there more cities with this religion or with that religion? There's a war between believers of these two religions. Which realms are going to be affected? Here is another example. The historic events of my game world. One note here. Ignore the BC Julian text. It is possible to teach MediaWiki custom calendars, but I haven't done it yet. So these years are years in my world's calendar just expressed in BC and AD. Obviously, this is another automatically generated table. Look how simple the underlying page is. It's just one simple query. Don't worry about the syntax here. The Semantic Media Wiki Manual does a good job explaining how these queries actually work. The thing I want to point out here is the left column. This is the pages these events are on. Note that many of these events do not have their own wiki page. They are just events mentioned somewhere on the text on some page. Nevertheless, this search finds them. Here's how that works. Take the founding of Fontikia. Looking at the page, it's not clear where this data comes from. This is not part of the fact box. In edit view, we see a few semantic tags. For example, here's a tag that marks this realm as being located on the continent of Auseca. If we look further down, we find our event. Ah, another template. And here in the template is the magic that puts any text marked as an event into the historic events table. Let's look at the maps again, because we have quite a few. We have political map showing all the various realms. We have a cultural map showing the various cultures. And then, of course, the maps that I already showed you, where a specific realm is highlighted when it is selected. These are all realized with a widget, which is kind of a fancy template. So it's more or less the same basic syntax. We include the map widget. We say where on the map we want to look. And this filter here is passed on to Mapbox so that the parts of the map that are not our province or realm or whatever we want to show uh, are darkened down. So that's the basics of it. And uh, the map widget has its own documentation. And it's a little bit of a complicated widget with a couple of uh, JavaScript functions and if conditions and so on to put all of this together. But this widget handles all of the overlays. You can see here that under specific conditions, specific overlays will be shown or will not be shown. And you don't have to type this down. Just go to the Dragon Eye Wiki, uh, look at the source code of a page, and you can just copy this and use it. Of course, you need to replace uh, URL addresses and so on. Um, but you can copy and adapt this for your own need. And then you can get all the interesting features that this template offers. And it's not limited to uh, just realms and uh, provinces and so on. Um, for example, I can use this to show any arbitrary region on the map I want. This is a region where some heretical cult has taken a place. This is a region which was historically suffering from a disease. Um, this is the area where orcs can be encountered in in the Dragon Eye world. So you see it can be made up of several pieces. So there are some here, so here. These areas are not connected. All these things are possible with just this one widget. So this is 
This is the parameters that it has that you can give. Uh, these numbers you need to take from your GIS solution, from cookies in my case. And then it's just a big bunch of uh, JavaScript that I include. So here is my, uh, my Mapbox stuff to include my Mapbox map. And then when the map is loaded, this big function gets executed and it basically just says, okay, do we want to show something? And if so, what is this parameter set to? If it's set to a province, then set this filter and include the name of the province that we want to show. If it's shown, if it's set to state, turn on this filter and to this name. If it's set to a zone, turn these things off, turn this filter on, and that's how it works. So depending on what I select, if I select the overlay realms, then turn on the realms overlay, turn off these. If I turn on cultures, turn on these overlays, the, uh, the overlay as well, as well as the labels, which put these, these big texts on there, and turn off the other labels. And the same for religions and so on. So for each condition, I've defined which parts of the map I want to see, which parts of the map I want to not see. And these mouse enter and leave provide the highlights. I will show that in a second. And then if I click on a label, then I set the window location to the name. I get the name from the feature that's stored in my map. And then I just go to the page that signifies this. And that gives me the functionality that if I am here uh, on, say, the political map, you see that my mouse cursor changes when I hover over a label and then I can click and I land on the page. And it works on all kinds of maps so, and I will get, if I click anywhere on the page, I will get what is the biome, to which realm does this place belong, what's the culture, what's the dominant religion. And if I click on a place, for example, I will land on the, uh, on the page of that place. I can click on this page and I can use this as well. Here, there's, there's a ruined inn. What's going on with that? Ah, yeah, okay, that's what's going on. So you can navigate on the map. Then you can uh, go back and say, what's about this river? Ah, okay, here's this river. And the map will zoom to show the river as well. So that's fully explorable fantasy world with all the information that you want to put into it. And these are all the moving parts. Thank you for following along. Sorry that this last part took more than three years to make. Follow the link here or in the description to the DragonEye wiki to find all the templates and widgets and so on. Just uh, look at the page source and you can copy it to your own media wiki instance. I am working on other games and I will post more content about building your fantasy world in the future. So leave a subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it. See you around soon. Bye bye.